Doctrine and Covenants, Section 114 Revelation, given through Joseph Smith the Prophet, at Far West, Missouri, April 11, 1838 Church positions held by those who are not faithful will be given to others. Verily thus saith the Lord, It is wisdom in my servant, David W. Patton, that he settle up all his business as soon as he possibly can, and make a disposition of his merchandise, that he may perform a mission unto me next spring, in company with others, even twelve, including himself, to testify of my name and bear glad tidings unto all the world. For verily thus saith the Lord, that inasmuch as there are those among you who deny my name, others shall be planted in their stead, and receive their bishopric. Amen. Section 115. Revelation, given through Joseph Smith the prophet, at Far West, Missouri, April 26, 1838, making known the will of God concerning the building up of that place and of the Lord's house. This revelation is addressed to the presiding members, the presiding officers, and the members of the church. The Lord names his church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Zion and her stakes are places of defense and refuge for the saints. The saints are commanded to build a house of the Lord that far west. Joseph Smith holds the keys of the kingdom of God on earth. Verily thus saith the Lord unto you, my servant Joseph Smith, Jr., and also my servant Sidney Rigdon, and also my servant Hiram Smith, and your counselors, who are and shall be appointed hereafter. And also unto you, my servant Edward Partridge, and his counselors, and also unto my faithful servants, who are of the high council of my church in Zion, for thus it shall be called, and then to all the elders and people of my church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, scattered abroad in all the world. For thus shall my church be called in the last days, even the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Verily I say unto you all, Arise, and shine forth, that thy light may be a standard for the nations, and that the gathering together upon the land of Zion and upon her stakes may be for a defense and for a refuge from the storm, and from wrath when it shall be poured out without mixture upon the whole earth. Let the city far west be a holy and consecrated land unto me, and it shall be called most holy, for the ground upon which thou standest, standest is holy. Therefore I command you to build a house unto me for the gathering together of my saints, that they may worship me, and let there be a beginning of this work, and a foundation, and a preparatory work, this following summer. Let the beginning be made on the fourth day of July next, and from that time forth let my people labor diligently to build a house unto my name. And in one year from this day let them rec recommence laying the foundation of my house. Thus let them from that time forth labor diligently until it shall be finished, from the cornerstone thereof unto the top thereof, until there shall not anything remain that is not finished. Verily I say unto you, Let not my servant Joseph, neither my servant Sidney, neither my servant Hiram, get in debt any more for the building of a house unto my name. But let a house be built unto my name, according to the pattern which I will show unto them. And if my people build it not, according to the pattern which I shall show unto their presidency, I will not accept it at their hands. But if my people do build it according to the pattern which I shall show unto their presidency, even my servant Joseph and his counselors, then I will accept it at the hands of my people. And again, verily I say unto you, it is my will that the city of far west should be built up speedily by the gathering of my saints, and also that other places should be appointed for stakes in the regions round about, as they shall be made, as they shall be manifested unto my servant Joseph from time to time. For behold, I will be with him, and I will sanctify him before the people. For unto him have I given the keys of this kingdom and ministry. Even so, amen. Section 116. Revelation given to Joseph Smith the prophet near White's Ferry at a place called Spring Hill, Davies County, Missouri, May 19th, 1838. Spring Hill is named by the Lord Adam on Diamon. Because, said he, it is the place where Adam shall come to visit his people, or the Ancient of Days shall sit, shall sit, as spoken of by Daniel the prophet. Section 117 
Revelation, given through Joseph Smith the prophet, at Far West, Missouri, July 8, 1838, concerning the immediate duties of William Marks, Newell K. Whitney, and Oliver Granger. The Lord's servants should not covet temporal things, for what is property unto the Lord? They are to forsake littleness of soul, and their sacrifices will be sacred unto the Lord. Verily thus saith the Lord, unto my servant William Marks, and also unto my servant Newell K. Whitney, let them settle up their business speedily, and journey from the day of Kirk from the land of Kirtland, before I, the Lord, send again the snows upon the earth. Let them awake, and arise, and come forth, and not tarry, for I, the Lord, command it. Therefore, if they tarry, it shall not be well with them. Let them repent of all their sins, and of all their covetous desires. Before me, saith the Lord, for what is property unto me, saith the Lord? Let the properties of Kirtland be turned out for debts, saith the Lord. Let them go, saith the Lord. And whatsoever remaineth, let it remain in your hands, saith the Lord. For have I not the fowls of the heaven, and also the fish of the sea, and the beasts of the mountains? Have I not made the earth? Do I not hold the destinies of all the armies of the nations of the earth? Therefore will I not make solitary places to bud, and to blossom, and to bring forth abundance, bring forth in abundance, saith the Lord? Is there not room enough on the mountains of Adam on Daaman, and on the plains of Olaha Shinaha, or the land where Adam dwelt, that you should covet that which is but the drop, and neglect the more weighty matters? Therefore, come up hither into the land of my people, even Zion. Let my servant William Marks be faithful over a few things, and he shall be a ruler over many. Let him preside in the midst of my people, in the city of far west, and let him be blessed with the blessings of my people. Let my servant Newell K. Whitney be ashamed of the Nicolaitan band, Nicol Latian band, and of all their secret abominations, and of all his littleness of soul before me, saith the Lord, and come up to the land of Adam on Daaman, and be a bishop unto my people, saith the Lord, not in name, but in deed, saith the Lord. And again I say unto you, I remember my servant Oliver Granger. Behold, verily I say unto him, that his name shall be had in sacred remembrance from generation to generation, for ever and ever, saith the Lord. Therefore, let him contend earnestly for the redemption of the first presidency of my church, saith the Lord, and when he falls, he shall rise again. For his sacrifice shall be more sacred unto me than his increase, saith the Lord. Therefore, let him come up hither speedily unto the land of Zion, and in the due time he shall be made a merchant unto my name, saith the Lord, for the benefit of my people. Therefore, let no man despise my servant Oliver Granger, but let the blessings of my people be on him for ever and ever. And again, verily I say unto you, let all my servants in the land of Kirtland remember the Lord their God, and mine house also, to keep and preserve it holy, and to overthrow the money changers of mine own due time, saith the Lord. Even so. Amen. Section 118. Revelation, given through Joseph Smith the prophet, at Far West, Missouri, July 8, 1838, in response to the supplication, Show us thy will, O Lord, concerning the twelve. The Lord will provide for the families of the twelve. Vacancies in the twelve are filled. Verily thus saith the Lord, Let a conference be held immediately, let the twelve be organized, and let men be appointed to supply the place of those who are fallen. Let my servant Thomas remain for a season in the land of Zion to publish my word. Let the residue continue to preach from that hour. And if they will do this in all lowliness of heart, in meekness and humility and long suffering, by the Lord given to them a promise that I will provide for their families, and an effectual door shall be opened for them from, the, from henceforth. And next spring, let them depart to go over the great waters, and there promulgate my gospel, the fullness thereof, and bear record of my name. Let them take leave of my saints in the city of our west on the twenty-sixth day of April next, on the building spot of my house, saith the Lord. Let my servant John Taylor, and also my servant Johnny Page, and also my servant Wilford Woodruff, and also my servant Willard Richards be appointed to fill the places of those who have fallen, and be officially notified of their appointment. Section 119. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet. At Far West, Missouri, July 8, 
July 8, 1838, in answer to his supplication, O Lord, show unto thy servants how much thou requirest of the properties of thy people for a tithing. The law of tithing, as understood today, had not been given to the church previous to this revelation. The term tithing in the prayer just quoted just quoted, and in previous revelations had meant not just one-tenth, but all free will offerings or contributions to the church funds. The Lord had previously given to the church the law of consecration and stewardship of property, which members, chiefly the leading elders, entered into by a covenant that was to be everlasting. Because of failure on the part of many to abide by this covenant, the Lord withdrew it for a time and gave instead the law of tithing to the whole church. The prophet asked the Lord how much of their property he, inquired, he required for sacred purposes. The answer was this revelation. The saints are to pay their surplus property and then give, as tithing, one-tenth of their interest annually. Such a course will sanctify the land of Zion. Verily thus saith the Lord, I require all their surplus property to be put into the hands of the bishop of my church in Zion. For the building of mine house, and for the laying of the foundation of Zion, and for the priesthood, and for the debts of the presidency of my church. And this shall be the beginning of the tithing of my people. And after that, those who have thus been tithed shall pay one-tenth of all their interest annually, and this shall be a standing law unto them for ever, for my holy priesthood, saith the Lord. Verily I say unto you, It shall come to pass that all those who gather unto the land of Zion shall be tithed of their surplus properties, and shall observe this law, or they shall not be found worthy to abide among you. And I say unto you, If my people observe not this law, to keep it holy, and by this law sanctify the land of Zion unto me, that my statutes and my judgments may be kept thereon, that it may be most holy. Behold, verily I say unto you, It shall not be a land of Zion unto you, and this shall be an ensample unto all the stakes of Zion, even so. Amen.